Hey, what's up guys? This is Nick from Nick Expose. On this episode, we're gonna dive into Lightroom. We're gonna go over how I edit my film scans, how I get the look that I do with uh, at least my film scans, and then I'm gonna talk about how that relates over to the darkroom and everything like that, what I feel is appropriate within uh, editing scans, and then what isn't appropriate, at least in my uh, taste and liking. But I do get questions all the time of how do you get your HP5 to look the way that it does anytime I get them scanned in or anytime I scan them in myself, it doesn't quite look the same. And I want to kind of address some of that as, uh, as we go as well. So we're going to dive into Lightroom here and we're going to talk about the rest of it as we go. So here we are in Lightroom. I have a uh, little selection. This is uh, an older piece that I did. Uh, I came across this scene to where there was a bunch of mannequins within uh, the school that Emily goes to, one of their buildings. Uh, they have a, a fashion program that has all these mannequins and they're displaying all the clothes, but I just thought it was a very, very unique uh, scene to come across with all these different mannequins throughout the hallway. So uh, I shot a couple rolls here, but I chose a little selection and I kind of want to walk through through and start talking about how I edit my scans, what I keep in mind with uh, editing my scans, and kind of break down some of the uh, barriers for a lot of people. I think a lot of people have this assumption that when you shoot film, you don't edit the scans at all, and that's not true uh, by any means. Anybody that's getting those punchy, contrasty uh, negatives that you're seeing, chances are are at least bumping the contrast in post. And I want to kind of uh, rid people of the fear of uh, you know bastardizing their film by uh, touching the the contrast slider or anything like that. So I'm going to walk through and show you guys exactly how I do it. So we're going to jump over here into the develop module. You're going to see right off the get-go, first of all, this uh, frame here was uh, destroyed in development. Somehow I scratched it. Uh, but you will also see that there is a uh, magenta hue to a lot of these. And then there's a green hue to some of the other ones. And uh, these were all scanned with my pack on. Uh, and it, it scans in black and white, but the, the program that I use uh, actually scans them in as color negatives. So it picks up some of the hue of the base. And actually, if you get scans in from a lab, oftentimes it might look something very similar to this. Um, so first thing I do is I actually built this little preset over here called Pack on Basic. Uh, and all it is is simply I switch it over from color to black and white, uh, bump my contrast up to 70% so you could see where uh, the contrast just pops up a little bit and then uh, over here it just adds a little bit of sharpening and then 80% uh, detail. So um, you could actually, you could see that this isn't fully sharpened. I could tweak this and make it even more sharp. Uh, and then I do that per roll. So the first thing I do is I come down here and I find something within, so you want to look at your entire set that you're about to edit, uh, if, whether or not you built a preset or if you just set those things up. I want to find something that kind of has general tonal range uh, that is consistent with most of the other images. So uh, whether it be this image or I think this first one works just fine. And then I'm actually going to set my initial contrast tones to where I want it. So we could go either from linear, which is going to be flat contrast, medium contrast or strong contrast. Typically, I like to end up on the strong contrast. Sometimes if the negative is already too punchy, uh, I might go medium or linear. It, it really depends on the negative, but I think with these ones, we're gonna go strong contrast. You'll also notice that my pack on here actually uh, leaves a little bit of the edge here, so I'm actually gonna crop this down and, uh, and just take off that black edge. Some people are gonna cringe when I do that. This is just how I edit my negatives. So once I get this general contrast and this general edit down, I'm gonna hit Command A for Select All. Uh, this is granted that the entire role is in uh, your selection, so Select All. I'm gonna go over here to Sync, and I'm gonna synchronize the entire set. So what that's gonna do, you're gonna start seeing these down here start to change and they're gonna go all monochrome. All that magenta hue is going to shift and, and go away. Uh, one of the things I will say, so Command D is unselect. You get back to any one of your images. Uh, one of the things I will say is when that magenta hue is on there, you could actually go into your tint after you've turned it black and white and changing the tint will actually change the way that the magenta starts uh, operating. So if you're having an issue trying to narrow in on that contrast, if you adjust that, it might take a little bit of adjustment there to 
to have the uh, the magenta hue or whatever hue, depending on whatever film you're scanning in, uh, HP5 scans in with that magenta hue. Uh, but depending on that hue, you might be able to uh, to switch these around down here and get that little bit of micro tuning on the contrast. Uh, like I said, as we see here, uh, some of these will probably need to be cropped in a little bit more um, just to take that, that edge off of here. Um, but now we have our initial edit all the way across the board. Next step that I do, uh, this is a quick little tip, is I actually turn the background over here white. I come up here, I make this 1-8, and, uh, and then if you hit F, you're actually going to go into full screen. And what this does is it gives me kind of a gallery view, uh, as if it were matted, as if it were uh, just isolated. That way I don't have any other distractions. And now I actually go through and I make my initial select. So I'll hit the right and the left arrow keys, and I'll start to go through. And I'll go, okay, I want this one. And I start hitting P for uh, pick. If you accidentally pick something, so you'll actually see, if you look down here in the, the bottom left corner, uh, there's a little flag that shows up when I hit P. If you hit U, it unpicks it. So that way you have a, uh, a selection if you aren't familiar with this kind of terminology within uh, Lightroom. But I actually have these selections to where I can start working through, finding what images I want to actually work with. I uh, don't want to work with that one. This one's interesting. P. Go through P. P. Uh, this one I could really take it or leave it. We're just going to leave it. Um, this one I'll edit P. This one I could leave. This one I'll leave. Uh, this one I'll leave. I know that I like the second one better. I like the uh, mannequin in focus rather than the uh, stairs in focus. And I just walk through and, and make my initial selects and go, uh, no, I don't want to work on that one, but I will work on this one. And just make my way through. That one's kind of interesting. And just for the sake of the video, keeping it short, we're just going to leave it at that. So now I, I come out, if you hit escape, uh, you could escape from full screen and you could leave it as white. You could change it back to, to medium gray. I like to edit with white because it really shows me uh, where my contrast points are from there. So now I'm going to click on the first image that has a flag within our, uh, our selections here. And then I'm just going to go over here and hit this filter. And I just want to see all of the flagged images. So now I know which ones I'm going to be working on. And now we can actually start diving in and, uh, and making our fine tuning adjustments here. Uh, so one of the big things that I keep in mind when I go through and I start to edit in Lightroom is uh, at least the general rule that I've given myself is if I can do it in the darkroom, then I can do it in Lightroom. Uh, I don't feel terrible about changing my exposure uh, on my scans. I don't feel terrible about changing my uh, contrast on my scans because I could do all that in the Lightroom or in the darkroom. Uh, I do feel bad of removing elements. So uh, let's see here. Let's say this element right here on this uh, image starts to bother me. I'm not going to go in here and start cloning uh, that out. I, I'm not going to do that. I can't do that in the darkroom, not that I know of. And uh, I'm not going to do that on these images. So I'm going to leave them the way that they are, but I am going to make some adjustments. So this one, I might actually increase my exposure. So if you use your plus and minus keys up by the delete, uh, you could actually increase or decrease your exposure. I'm going to bring that up a little bit. And uh, with this image, I think this image falls right into uh, where I want it to be. Uh, I want to get to some of these images. Actually, I'm going to jump forward to this one because I want to show you a little trick. What I will do, because you can go, and actually I need to go fill. You can go in uh, with your prints and you can actually spot tone um, different specs out. So I'm actually going to go through and I'm going to remove any dust specs that I might have. I think there might be one up there. Here, let me actually... I'm hitting the, the space bar to get this hand where you can move around while you're zoomed in. Uh, I think that's actually a specular highlight. I don't think that's a dust spot, so I might leave that one. Uh, enter, enter. So this is your spot healing tool for anybody that isn't too familiar with, uh, with Lightroom. Uh, but then the big thing here is if you hit your J key, this is actually going to bring up your um, peaking point. So my whites are peaking here, my blacks are peaking down here. So anywhere there's black or uh, blue, there's black peaking. Anywhere there's white, 
or excuse me, red, <laughs> there's white peaking. And what I like to do personally, this is my own personal taste, is I really, really enjoy deep blacks within my images. So I actually, I crush my blacks down to where I have a decent amount of blue peeking out. I might do the same with my highlights, so I'm gonna bring these up and allow those whites to just kind of peak a little bit. I don't, I try not to peak my whites too much. I'll crush my blacks much more than I'll peak my whites, um, but I allow that to happen. And then I might go in and make my uh, shadow uh, adjustments here and just bring in those mid-tones just where I want them. And if you know, if you've ever printed in the darkroom, this is not too exaggerated from what you're able to do within the darkroom. You could actually put in different colored filters. So I typically print with a number three filter, which pushes my contrast a little bit further. And then you could also start doing split tone and um, split contrast filters and all these different things to where you could start bringing in your mid-tones and everything like that. So like I said from the beginning, if I know that it could be done in the darkroom, then I know that I could do it in Lightroom, at least for myself. Uh, once I get to uh, a point to where I feel like my contrast is nice, I'll start moving forward. And you could even bring in your previous if I want to start just kind of uh, adjusting this way. And you could actually reset all of your spot healing tools. Uh, and then wherever, let's see if there's any, doesn't look like there's any dust specs in here. One of the things that I also will do, let me find uh, something, none of these really need to be uh, dodged or burned, but if you do end up wanting to bring in some, some dodging and burning, what I'll do is I'll go into my paintbrush tool over here. I'll bring either the exposure down or the exposure up. Um, sometimes I, I tend to choose something that's a little bit more heavy handed and heavy fisted right off the get go. Um, if you use your uh, right bracket and left bracket, you can bring your brush size up and down. I'm using a Wacom tablet, so uh, it's kind of easy for me to paint in here, but let's say I want to dodge or sorry, burn um, this shadow down for whatever reason. If I wanted to burn that down, we could bring this brush up. We could bring the backside of this mannequin's head down, kind of follow the contour here. Let's say that that's what I wanted to do for whatever reason. Let's say I wanted to burn in this edge. And then I could go over here and I could start adjusting this and kind of pulling it down to my liking and say, okay, that brings in a little bit more uh, just, you know, contrast and a little bit more oomph into there. Then I can make a new one. I could bring this back up. Uh, and then I could start going in and say, I want to dodge this out and start bringing out some definition around the, the outside. I know that we just burned this down, but this is just for uh, demonstration. And if I wanted to start emphasizing some of these uh, differences in, in edges here, I could start painting in. And then now we have, you could go in here and if I scroll down, you could actually see what the dodging and burning is actually done for us. And uh, I could go back here, bring, actually this, go back down. There we go. Now you'll see a much more definite difference. Like I said, this isn't, this isn't how I would edit this image. Um, in fact, I'm gonna reset these. I actually like where this ends up uh, right off the get-go. But again, you can just start moving through these different images. Uh, I'm going to bring that crop in a little bit. Bring this over to include that mannequin over there. And once again, I have my, my J for the uh, highlight points, peaking points. I'm going to bring these up a little bit. I'm going to crush these blacks right back down. And then I'm going to bring those shadows back down just to give some moodiness to the shot. You can hit J again, go back to full screen. You can start to see what it is. If you hit your, your um, backslash button, it'll actually show you a before and after. Um, my before and after is going to be a little skewed because uh, these are actually copies of an original edit. Um, so if I reset here, you could start to see the difference that we have in our tonal range. So uh, with all of this turned off, if I go back to the contrast off, or if I go down and I turn this linear contrast off, you could start to see uh, what these different choices uh, start to do to the image. Once again, if we go over here, uh, I'm gonna bring J back in, bring my highlights up. I want that nice contrast in there, bring my blacks down, my shadows down a bit. And uh, in here, I might actually, you could actually do this as well. If I want this entire half, so let's say I wanted to burn this whole side down, I actually need to crop this in a little bit too. Burn this whole side down, I could actually open this up, bring this down, 
and I could do a pretty soft edge or a pretty hard edge and start to burn in those stairs to where it's not so blown out. I bring that back up a little bit, bring some of that contrast back in. I can bring my exposure up and boom, there we go. We got nice tonal range all the way through. Here on something like this, I'd probably crush these blacks a little bit more. I'd probably open the shadows up just a little bit just to get some detail back in here, but I do want these blacks nice and deep. And then we can bring that highlight up. And now once again, you have this great tonal range that creates these nice shapes within here, this beautiful, uh, you know, scissoring out of, of different objects. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know. It's There's no definite way of editing all this. There's no absolutes in any of this. It's really just how, uh, however I feel at the moment is kind of how it uh, gets edited. If I'm listening to a pretty heavy-handed uh, song, these things might get pretty punchy. If I'm listening to something that's a little bit more soft and mellow, my images might end up a little bit more soft and mellow. I do think about the scene, uh, and then I think about how I wanted the scene to look from the get-go. Um, so with this scene, uh, this is a darker scene, so I'm really fine with bringing this black down. Uh, I might open the shadows up just to open up the mid-tones here, but then I'm probably going to crush this black down again, bring the highlights up, and then this is kind of an abstraction anyway, but I like how it just kind of gets to these cutouts and these shapes uh, to where it's more of, uh, you know, graphic design elements than it is the actual photo. Once again, you could actually kind of see the difference of my original edit to the edit right now, and it all changes. Here I'm going to bring these blacks down, bring my J in, open this up, then I'm really going to crush those down. This is on strong contrast. You could even bring your contrast up here. Then I'm really going to bring those highlights up just to give that separation there. And actually, there's a big difference between highlights and whites. So you'll start to see if I move the white slider compared to if I move the highlight slider, the highlights kind of pull in some of the mid-tones. The whites really end up being on the high side. Uh, if you look up here in your histogram, your highlights are really going to be kind of half of the, the shadow and beyond is going to pull it all up. Your whites are really just going to be right in here. And then your shadows are really going to be uh, kind of half the mid-tones to the, the darks and blacks. And then your blacks are really going to be this black point that, that really pulls in. Hopefully all that makes sense. But uh, I'm going to bring, now I've messed it all up. I'm going to bring all this back down, bring my whites up a little bit, bring my highlights up a little bit. And really kind of tweak that in there. Perfect. I might start searching around and seeing if there's any... Uh, you know, specs or anything that I missed in any dust, uh, I do a pretty good job at blowing off my negatives and uh, making sure that there's not too much dust on them. You'll want to make sure that your J is off when you do go in there. And then down here we have some dust. So I'm going to start painting the dust out with the uh, spot healing tool. Uh, I'm not sure if these are dust particles or if they're highlights. They don't look like they'd be highlights on there. Maybe there are dust particles actually on the dress, but um, those again could be painted back in in the uh, the spot toning of a print. So, uh, anyways, this is this is pretty simple and pretty straightforward on on how I edit. Uh, really, that J key is is a big trick on my stuff. Is is making sure that my blacks are down, and then you also want to make sure that you know where your uh, where your monitor settings are and what your monitor looks like compared to what it looks like on a phone. Um, my end goal for all the my work is to print it in the darkroom uh, or to print it on a zine. Um, I'm at a cross right now whether or not I will uh, print through the digital scans for zines moving forward or if I'll print in the darkroom and then scan uh, those prints in to where I did all the, uh, the tonal range and the contrast adjustments and the dodging and burning in the darkroom and then work off the print there. But uh, regardless, you can get these set for printing. Um, some papers, you want to really crush those blacks down because the papers start to mute out the black tones. Uh, but really, it's up to interpretation. Again, once again, uh, I've said it multiple times now, but uh, if I could do it in the dark room, then I am perfectly fine with doing it in Lightroom. I'm not going to go through and manipulate the image like crazy, but I am going to go through and make sure that my black points are where I want them, my white points are where I want them, and then my mid-tones are where I want them. And then I'll do dodging and burning, um, spot healing of any dust, dust specs, and then I'm set to go and I'm, I'm good to, uh, to export and start sharing on Instagram or any of the other uh, avenues that I might share on. So if you guys have any questions on this stuff, uh, I'd love to hear in the comments down below. 
Uh, again, this, this is gonna really drastically change depending on your scanner. So if you're using a flatbed scanner, you might have to work with your, your images in a slightly different way. Sometimes flatbeds will scan super, super um, flat and you'll wanna add extra contrast just to get it back in, but at least you can see where my tonal ranges fall and, uh, and where they were originally. So once again, if we look at these, if I reset this, you'll see back to where it was, back to where it was, and then we can step back and you can see where, you know, my end product in this instance will end. So hopefully this helps. I'd love to hear you guys' comments, your thoughts down below. What are, what are the steps that you guys go through? Or is there anything that I might be missing on my editing process that you guys add into your workflow? I would love to hear that as well. And uh, if you're editing on your phone or anything like that, I'd love to hear what apps you're using and, uh, and how you're going about to get those edits as well. So. Thank you guys for checking this video out. If you're new to the channel, I'd love for you to check out some of the other videos. We have tons of videos going into the creative process and the thought process behind our artwork, our photography, and uh, just our, our projects in general. So go check those out. Like and subscribe down below. Until the next video, uh, go and push yourself two stops. All right. Thanks, guys. Peace.